It is party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Brady Show. This is Wednesday. It is hump day all day long. Glad you guys are still tuning in, especially after last night's bombastic remarks made by me, of which I remain unapologetic. The Chris Cruz, Super Mario Chris Cruz is what I'm going to refer to him as today. Uh, can we, Kayla, can I get a shot of you guys over there? And of course, Kayla, they're at the helm driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. Kayla? <laughs> I'm so much happier when you're here than Mark. It's honest to gosh truth. Um, anyway, if you missed last night's episode, don't go back and watch. Don't go back and watch it. Don't go back and watch it. Chris, you said that they've aired a clip on Four Minute Buzz with Glenn Beck this morning from last night's show. Tell me what of that 44 minutes and 16 seconds of that show was even airable. It on- was the part where you talked about how transgender judges are activists not judges yeah and they're, then they cut real quick back to glenn judicial activist yeah yep. uh so you ran a six second clip that's awesome hey my good friend morgan zeggers is in the hot seat welcome to the show i'm glad you are here oh thank you for having me we will keep it clean mm-hmm. all right we'll keep it straight i tried to warn you i'm like a grandma so yeah, i don't I, know how I know much you. i'll fit in on this. i know you i uh, i've wanted to get you on the show for a long time and uh, so I'm glad you, you're you filming across the parking lot yeah. over here in the museum. Tell me about what you're doing. Uh, so three years ago, I started a nonprofit called Young Americans Against Socialism. And we've been working and fundraising to get to a point where we could interview in person, <clears throat> long form people who escaped communism. And so uh, we asked Glenn Beck and the people at Mercury One and the American Journey Experience if we could film in their vault surrounded by all of the archives that they've collected, uh, all the artifacts. And so now we interview people who escaped places like the USSR and communist China, actually tortured and slave labor camps mm. there. And I mean, it's just gruesome stories sometimes. And we are surrounded by history while we're telling these stories of history. So it's really special. So for those of you who have never been to the American experience over here at Mercury One, there's some pretty, I like to go over there every now and then just see the new stuff Mm -hmm. that Glenn has found. And it's always fascinating to me, these, him and David Barton, the stuff that they collect. And uh, I saw your Instagram the other day where you were wearing the ring that has the little lock of George Washington's hair in it. And I was like, Morgan was here. I I missed you by a day. I'm like, Morgan was here. I said, I told Chris, I said, if she comes back, get her on the show, please. So I'm glad you're here. How hard is it to find these communist survivors to, to interview? Uh, I mean, it's not hard once you get into the communities. <clears throat> I Once they get here, they all, I feel like, build a network and they stay connected and they're very family oriented. And so it's really easy once you start to meet the initial people. Um, We actually, we interviewed a husband and we eventually convinced his wife to come on as well. And so Mm -hmm. getting that full family story, the feminine version versus the masculine version (coughs) of doing things like uh, what they were doing was transporting their family from Romania to Poland to America Mm -hmm. when the Germans had come in and then the USSR came to get the Germans out of their country. And so first they had to flee the Nazis and then they were fleeing the USSR communists and they tell that story so to hear it from a mother's perspective of protecting her kids Mm -hmm. and then to hear it from the father's perspective of having to be the leader of that family unit it's just such an interesting dynamic that's so 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 what you're saying is communism is bad very very bad and we do not learn nearly enough about it in the public education system and I mean like the bare minimum Mm -hmm. Um, in fact we're starting to learn that it's a good thing I would say and so we are teaching what the public education system refuses to teach and we're doing it in a way that paints a very clear picture of what happens when the policies are actually implemented how are people going to be able, how are they going to be able to view what you're taping so it's on youtube um yeah. it'll be on youtube on rumble and then it's a podcast version as well but our channel is uh fightsocialism.org is the website and then our channel is young americans against socialism it's it's entertaining it's not like shoving politics down someone's throat we hope that it's something where people look forward to hearing that story of inspiration and resilience and really character because i think a lot of this goes back to we are morally weak people here in the country Mm. spiritually weak mentally weak physically weak we got some problems there you know that and i think the more stories we can hear of people that go through truly hard times and suffer and get through it as a family and then get to america and are just so grateful i hope that that's really the core message not me saying socialism bad you know I learn a lot from your videos. I watch your videos, and I encourage everybody to check out Morgan's. Watch your Instagram. <clears throat> it's fun. <laughs> Thank you. You make it fun. <laughs> Thanks. You're, you're quite an artist as well. 
can talk about that in a little bit, but the uh, I watch your videos, and you and I met, we met in the Woodlands a couple of years ago at mm-hmm. Christian Collins' event at the... Yeah. yeah. Actually, when I, I came there, I lived in upstate New York. I yeah. came for that speech, and I had, I had talked to my family, and I said, I think I'm going to probably live in Texas for like a month and see if I like it, and then I'll potentially move. But when I came to that speech, I went and I looked around. I saw Lukenbach, I saw Bernie, I saw yeah. Houston, all these places, and I immediately got an apartment, and there, then I bought a house later. <laughs> but there's something about Texas. It, you... You know, in, during my campaign, people have heard me say it ad nauseum. I say, you know, Texas is a spirit. It's mm-hmm. not a geography. It's a spirit. And once you catch it, you don't lose it. And it's contagious. You want yeah. to give it away. But it's caught. It's not taught. You can tell people about Texas till yeah. you're blue in the face. But until you – in those places you listed, like Luke and Bog and going to Bernie and going to Bandera and all those kind of places, you catch that spirit of Texas. So um, your sphere of influence, I know, has exploded – I know sometimes you kind of miss the forest for the trees. You may not see it the way others on the outside see it, but your sphere of influence has exploded. And do you feel like people underestimate your message? Because what the message that you're bringing is some he- very heady stuff. When you're fighting socialism, you're discussing communism, these kind of things. Do you th- feel like people say, oh, it's just it's Morgan's project. She's doing this little thing. or Or do you feel like people are you know, they're grasping what you're trying to say because you're putting some heavy meat out there. Yeah, I. it's hard for me to tell because I, I do a few different things and I think it all comes together for one important message. But I interview the survivors from communism, but what I am also trying to do is promote more femininity in the country. And so mm. my following is grown in the way of, I have fathers that follow me specifically so that they can show my content to their young daughters. And I take that so seriously now. And so I see this more as me transitioning just from communism interviews to really embracing that whole concept of respecting the past and the present and connecting it to the future, but then also rethinking education. I, I just thought I was going to interview some great people that could pass their stories down. And it, it just it was just a passion project. I had a full-time job at the time. And now I'm fully in the world of media and I see it as an opportunity to rethink education. If you ask me to fix the country, we have to rethink education, leadership, and community. And so that's partly why I also really like what you do. And with that means rethinking education outside of the public education sphere that's been created. It's an indoctrination camp. And so you don't have to be in a classroom to learn these certain things. I'm also really passionate about school choice and homeschooling. And the fact that now I didn't mean to, but now I have a huge following of people that homeschool or send their kids to pods or at least try and teach their kids things outside of the schools that they do go to. That was something I didn't expect and I appreciate it. So like when I go to speeches on Turning Point USA campuses and stuff, um, um, I have people that bring their families because they just heard that I was in town and that yeah. it was the best, you know, change that I've ever experienced, really. I love that. That's awesome. I We had Adam Goulet on the show Monday, and of course, he's the founder and director of uh, Accuracy in Media. Mm-hmm. And we started talking about the public school system. I call it the public school system. I don't even call it the education system because they're not educating anybody no. anymore. So I, we were talking about the public school system and he and I had not prepped any conversation prior to that thing. And it was literally like he was taking my words about the public school system and throwing them back. The public school system in America is built on a faulty foundation. It's a humanist system. It turns out socialists and Marxists, especially with the curriculum. And I'm and again, I'm always saying I'm not knocking the educators. Some I do. Some need to be knocked, but a lot of them are victims of the same system, right? Mm-hmm. They, they get in it for altruistic and real reasons to educate and shape young minds, but then they wind up getting caught up in a system that's kind of stacked a deck against them. And I remind everybody that in 1917, in October 1917, when the Bolsheviks took over in Russia, they set up those orphanages all across the landscape of Russia, and they took the kids out of the home Mm -hmm. so they could turn them into good communists, right? Became recruiting centers for the KGB. So your kids became your executioner, in in essence. So this is not a far step here. What we're doing, we have systematically set up a network, and we call it the school system, that is actually turning kids away from the parents. We I pre-taped. Uh, next week's Monday and Tuesday show yesterday. Mm-hmm. I confuse myself sometimes, but I talked specifically about the, the 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 culture of fatherlessness in in America, and how we're losing masculine authority. Uh, we've called it toxic. 
it, those are oxymorons. It's either masculine or it's toxic. It can't be both, mm-hmm. right? They, they're mutual exclusive, mutually exclusive concepts. But we've lost that. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday's episode, folks will see, I pulled my Bible out and I did a whole thing of the prodigal son and the significance of the father's relationship with two sons. Mm-hmm. And so um, <laughs> it, what you're saying here is, is everything from the communist, you know, in, in, interviewing those from the masculine perspective as protectors, those who wanted to lead their family out of this. And then the 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 situation that we have in America where we have weakened masculinity, we've weakened men, and we're, and we're churning out, you know, beta, soy, whatever you want to call them, you know, gender confusion. I mean, I, this crazy stuff, this yeah. identity crisis that we're going. I say all that to ask you this. How long do we have before we have a full-blown American meltdown culturally where we become virtually unrecognizable because of the influences of socialism? Well, I think that that's already happened. Um, I'm not the most positive person. If you want an honest answer, I'll I'll give it to you. Some people don't really want that. Um, I think it would take decades to restore America to what it was intended to be, to what it could be. But we're so far gone at this point that it, it needs to be a serious effort of a lot of people coming together to say like actual change needs to happen we need to go on offense <clears throat> that means completely dismantling the education system among other things um but it's disturbing if you look at now it's not just oh you know our kids aren't taught some stuff in schools and we make some viral videos where we laugh at the young kids and the sh- um, you know the man on the street videos yep, sure. they go viral and everybody's like oh i can't believe someone doesn't know what our national anthem is this is hilarious but it's so so bad because it, it's not just that they don't know basic history facts. You have to understand that these people have no concept of what government tyranny even is, mm-hmm. of what it looks like to have an oppressive government come into your life and tell you what to do and what those warning signs are, what the red flags are. And so when I explain, especially to like donors and to people that I'm trying to get to support what we're doing, I explain it as when I talk to young people and even older people in America, they say something like this. What's going on these days? It's like that book, 1984. It's like that movie, V for Vendetta. This is so creepy. It's Orwellian. And it's like, you guys know, actually, the totalitarianism we're seeing is very replicative of the Cultural Revolution in China. Mm -hmm. And like you said, with the the daycare system in the USSR, when the Bolsheviks came, they did the same thing in China as well. And they encouraged children to not see themselves as a child of their parent, but as somebody that should be watching their parent to see if their parent was going to uh, dissent away from the views of the state. So... I wish that we looked at oppressive bureaucracy in America, the shutting down of private business, the uh, sending child protective services after small business owners that dared to open their business like a hair salon, Mm -hmm. sending them to go check on the kids for their safety because is mommy is mommy scaring you by having her business open doing that? That's very similar to the bureaucracy that was used in Venezuela to seize the means of production. The totalitarianism we're seeing is very similar to the Cultural Revolution of China, the elimination. I read an article, did you see this one? An article that says every aspect of of apple pie is great in terms of an example for why America is racist. And it talked about the sugar on the crust of the apple pie being from Haiti, where they're slaves. The apples are from Asia. They aren't even American. It, it, It goes down where You can look and say, oh, they're just making fun of apple pie, being leftist, complaining about everything. But what they're doing is attacking things that are quintessential for American heritage. And they're trying to remove the four olds like we're in the Cultural Revolution. It was, I think, ideas, customs, habits, traditions. And specifically, this really freaked me out. Did you see in Texas? I I was living in Bernie at the time. I saw that they were trying to go after the Alamo. You mm-hmm. had leftists in Texas trying to remove education about the Alamo from Texas curriculum in order to make sure that they weren't taught as heroes, the people who defended the Alamo. Instead, they were white settlers on Mexican land. Right. So it's that distortion of American history. It's that removal of our tradition and something that we can all come around and celebrate together that really disturbs me. And I do think it's going to be decades to fix. And, and we need a lot of people to start understanding how serious this is. Yeah. And they don't. They don't. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, Chris, give me something to sell. There you go. I like it.
Perfect. Hey, uh, friends with the president warning about food shortages. Yes, the president actually did tell us that food shortages were coming. You got to get prepared in case a worst scenario, worst case scenario happens in the next few weeks or months. Uh, if you're not ready, drop what you're doing. And I want you to seriously go to MyPatriotSupply.com. My mother, I was on the phone with my mother yesterday and she said, how much does that stuff cost? I said, it's worth every penny. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it's worth every penny. Uh, listen, My Patriot Supply, they're the largest that's out there. They're the most dependable that's out there as far as your preparedness uh, supplies go. They've served millions of families. They've got 50,000 four- and five-star reviews. You can trust MyPatriotSupply.com for everything you need. They carry all different sizes of emergency food kits. Each kit provides breakfast, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks. Totals over 2,000 calories a day for optimal energy during stressful times. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com today, and you'll get free shipping. It'll be delivered discreetly to your door orders are flooding in do not delay go to mypatriotsupply.com before things get worse that is mypatriotsupply.com we'll be right back did you see i i was listening to the news yesterday um uh, interesting story going on in ukraine you have Holocaust survivors that are now being transported for protection back to Germany. Did you hear that? That's crazy. I did not hear that. You one. talk about your life coming full circle. Right? You escape Holocaust Germany. You 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 become a Ukrainian refugee or a refugee in Ukraine, and now they're going back to Germany for protection. Yeah. Well, Wildly there's also ironic. there's people that I've interviewed that they escaped Cuba to go to Venezuela. Mm. And then they tried to warn everybody in Venezuela and say, this is very similar. What what Chavez is saying is very similar to Castro. All, the, all these warnings. And everybody would say, it can never happen here. Yeah. And then now they're in America after escaping Venezuela saying, we're trying to warn them once again. Trying and nobody's warn. listening to us. Scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is frightening stuff. Um, it, and I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean that with every fiber of my being, it's frightening. The stuff that people are willing to put up with. So Ron DeSantis, um, not the hero we deserve, but uh, <laughs> the guy keeps delivering. Uh, he said that uh, Disney crossed the line by declaring that it will push for a recently approved piece of legislation to either be repealed by the state legislature or rejected by the courts. Why do these people want to fight so hard to educate kindergarten to third graders about sexual stuff? I mean, what is, what is, what is the M.O. here? These people are disgusting. Uh, I, it's it's just really a display of how politics works these days. I always, specifically for this, imagine somebody like us sitting at a table and just having a conversation with somebody who truly thinks that this is a don't say gay bill. What would happen if we just had to confront them with the basic truths in a normal conversation? But that's just does not happen these days. Happen. I think he said it best, though. He was like, these are Californian corporate leaders of their business saying that they're going to dictate what happens in florida at right. a state policy level it you're out of your league here and and so that's what i like to see i think every state needs to be doing what he's doing yeah he steps up i mean he's, he's you know again thank god you and look look at the power of what happens when you have a guy who stands in the gap yeah right so he just barely beat uh, Gilliam in, the, when, in their gubernatorial race, right? They almost had Andrew Gilliam. That would have been a nightmare. He only beat him like one and a half percent or something like that. Mm -hmm. But now look at how red, for a lack of better terms, how red uh, Florida has become. It, that, that expanse has grown between the leftist ideology and conservative values. Now people are flocking to Florida who are seeking after freedom. But again, um, if you if you'll stand, people will follow. They will come. They if you'll stand in the gap and you'll say the right things, do the right things. And that again, I keep saying that's the difference between a governor DeSantis and a governor Abbott in Texas. Abbott mm -hmm. says a lot of the right things, he doesn't do them, or he waits to see how good it's going to turn out for uh, for Ron, and then he'll do them. Or if the I, polls I, are sh if the polls are showing that it. I worked. think he also benefited from the stereotype of what Texas is. I mean, yeah. you guys have, like you said, that energy, <clears throat> and it, he's almost kind of riding that wave without implementing what yeah. it means to really be Texas leaders. I mean, don't get me wrong, Ron pissed me off two months ago, 
when he said, welcome to Florida, the new Texas. Yeah. You know, they don't have waffle irons in the shape of Florida. They don't have that. Uh, this is Texas. But uh, I, I'm really sick of this whole don't say gay bill thing and continually saying that. Um, and it's not in the bill. We all know that. But again, this idea that say, well, we don't want we do not want to educate your children regarding sexuality and gender and all of this. But then you sure are fighting real hard to do it. So which is it? Um, and get your hands off our kids. And again, you can go watch the final block of my show last night where I got pretty explicit, pretty explicit on that deal. Hmm. I kind of enjoy, I have a love-hate relationship with these videos that Ron Perlman, Hellboy, you know, have you oh, seen any of those things? That one was disturbing. Well, this guy's demented, right? Yeah. So <laughs> he goes on Twitter, he, he's railing against Ron DeSantis on the, on the education bill, on the parental rights and education bill. Um, and he thinks he's a tough guy, right? So he goes off on his little profanity-laced tirades. And um, uh, he said, um, don't say gay. Don't say gay is the first two words in the sentence spoken by a political leader in the state of the United States of America. Don't say. Don't effing say, you Nazi pig. Say the First Amendment. Read about it. Then run for office, you piece of. This guy's unhinged. Um, <laughs> but they come after him pretty hard on social media. They, Did they? they? Oh, yeah. They rip him. Okay. They rip him. Which is good. Um, but again, what they're doing with guys like Ron Perlman is the left uses those guys to to help the misinformation campaign that's out there. So to think that this is some guy, like anytime any of these celebrities, in my opinion, I just think that whenever these guys go on these little rants and these tirades, people say, well, they're just trying to be relevant. No, they're useful tools. Right. And so the left loves to use that and continue to push that thing out there because the more that misinformation is spread, it's like anything else. It just becomes, you know, the perceived common knowledge. Right. You saw I showed you that graph of the thing people perceive to be reality in America versus the really the, the true numbers that are out there. Yeah. Uh, how do we overcome any of this stuff if the perceptions are wrong? You know, well, so back to when I started my nonprofit, I was looking into effective communication strategy and there's a study from michigan state university that says the most effective way to actually reach someone with a hard to understand topic or with an issue that you have to understand why it impacts you and the world around you so it's not just like a an issue that you memorize and understand the basics of and or an opposing viewpoint it was actually hearing it from a peer mm -hmm. not from a parent or a professor or somebody talking down to you as if they're explaining it from a professional standpoint yeah. and so taking that concept of peer rationale into not just an issue of communism and, and education of history if we take that into speaking to the members of our community, I think that that's really how we have positive change. Now, one example is all of these people that moved to Texas. You and I have been talking about Texas a lot today. Good. When I moved from New York State to Texas, I went to live out my values. I'm a conservative woman. I'm an American woman, very proud of those values, and I wanted to live out my values in Texas. When I moved into my house in my tiny little family-sized neighborhood right next to an elementary school... I didn't have a single person that like brought me a little gift mm. to my door and said like, welcome to the neighborhood. And when I was in a military family growing up, that always happened. Right. And it was a shock to me because it's like, what the heck are Texas conservatives doing? If people are moving at such rapid numbers that you can't change, you can't make people not come. A lot of people are coming. And if we don't embrace them and communicate to them why our state is so successful and why it's worthy of being moved into, then when are they ever going to hear it? If all they're hearing is this hyper-political conversation right. online by these people that have no idea what they're talking about. So bringing it to the most local community friend-to-friend -friend level, I think, is going to actually have positive change. And it's a serious action item that you can all implement in your lives you know yeah getting back to that you, you bring up an interesting point there we've lost all sense of community mm -hmm. you know what was it you were saying the other day chris I, I don't even think that we've aired that yet this is for next week you and i were having the conversation about you know you, you hate to use the phrase it takes a village to raise you know you know the whole hillary clinton thing but the in essence that there is value to that statement if you if you understand it correctly yeah not it, through it government take, regulation yeah, it and takes programs. Yeah, a community to help a family. You know, it used to be you take welfare system or you take, um, 
education system, any of those. Historically in America, it was the responsibility of the church. It was the responsibility of the community. We've lost all of that stuff for government dependence, right? So there's no hope for us unless we come back to a sense of community. Yeah. But social media has us all backbiting. You know, we're mad at each other. Everybody's, you know, a, a student of nuance and, and can't understand sarcasm. They can't understand humor. You know, you can't even make a joke online without it turning into five type five types of World War Three um, in the comments section. You know, at what point in time? And, and this is a conviction of mine. I'm just kind of I'm kind of coming into this self-realization lately of I'm kind of wanting to change my whole way of operating mm. because it's not. I, I've been doing things a certain way for a number of years now, and it's like, okay, that's not working, you know? So it's time to get back into a sense of community. How can I serve my community? How can I encourage my community? And I'm talking about my neighbors, right? Yeah, the people in exactly. my sphere. How can I help them? How can I grow them? How can I make them more successful? So I've been, I've been meeting with people. I've been going and visiting with them and, and sitting down, talking to them, hearing their needs, hearing what's going on, checking in on them those kind of things. How can I help you grow? How can I benefit your business? Those kind of things. Because you're right, we've lost all of that. Yeah. It's just gone. Well, and when we hear from the left that we need community ownership and we need, right. that's what they say for collectivizing businesses and taking government control of these private businesses, community owned. Or they say that children belong to the community and that it takes a community, like you said, a right. village to raise the child. They're talking about government exactly. and government structure and programs. When exactly. we talk about community, I see it as if I'm going out of town, if something happens to my family and like maybe I have to go to a family funeral, I can ask my neighbor next door to water my plants and take care of my animals mm -hmm. because I can trust them and I can trust them with the key to my house in that sense because we are a tied up community but when you have community organizers like Saul Alinsky trained AOC right. Barack Obama Hillary Clinton they see community as government and so we see it completely different yeah. but like I said if somebody like me is moving into a community in Texas and nobody comes to my door just to greet me you don't have to say hey are you a Republican can you sign up to vote Look right away Morgan, put, put the camera back on Morgan who would not go visit this girl <laughs> Who would not no go visit one her? Did. No one did. It was very sad. I that was hoping pathetic. someone would bring cookies. I don't know. I don't need like gifts, <laughs> but it was just the sense of like, wow, nobody that lives around me offered maybe, I don't know, this young alone girl. I moved into the house. I was by myself. Yeah. Nobody even offered, hey, if you ever need anything for safety purposes, let me know. Nobody said, hey, this is what we do as a community. We meet on these certain days or, or we have a barbecue every month, whatever it is. And nobody thought to maybe say, do you need a, a slip to register to vote? Where's right. the GOP community level coordination? You know, right. it's like when we get down to those basic questions, if we can't stop people from moving to these conservative states, we've got to find a plan on communicating to them just why our state is so worthy of being moved to. You're putting ideas in my head and I like it. Thanks. Yeah. But, and I'm sorry because you were asking about that crazy guy that was about, no, like, talking okay. about Nazis. The, the less we get away from even caring about that stuff and we all can say, okay, he's crazy, let's focus on what really matters, yeah. we'll be in a better place. I agree. And Ron, you have money, fix your teeth. Um, <laughs> Hey, what does our current out-of-control inflation look like? Well, it looks like you're paying 47% more for fuel than a year ago. It looks like you're paying 41% more than the same used vehicle if you'd have bought it this year instead of last year. It looks like you're paying almost 10% more to feed your family. It looks like every dollar in your savings is now worth less than it was a year ago. So I want you to hedge against the U.S. dollar by investing in something of real value, gold and silver from Birch Gold. Precious metals have historically been a safe haven in times of inflation, and Birch Gold is the leader in converting IRAs and 401ks into a tax-sheltered IRA backed by gold and silver. Thousands of satisfied customers with an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Birch Gold can help you protect your savings. It's very simple. Just text C-H-A-D, I spell it Chad, to 989898 to get a free info kit on gold. There's no obligation to get this info. Text Chad to 989898 to get your free info kit now. That's Chad to 989898. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. All right. 
Do you remember back in the good old days when playing God was something only Morgan Freeman was allowed to do? And if literally anyone else attempted it, you sort of stood back from them a few paces on their off chance that their their comeuppance might be spilling onto you when the lightning struck. Folks, we're just exiting the geopolitical frying pan of the COVID pandemic into the fire of potential world war. And yet there are scientists out there right now whose default position seems to be poke the bear until it mauls you. They're attempting to engineer, and I swear I'm not making this stuff up, Contagious vaccines. There, I got gotcha. you. I'll bet you didn't see that one coming, did you? I, I know I didn't because, hey, we've just spent the past couple of years coming to the painful realization that the medical community at large doesn't know anywhere near as much as it claims to know and is wildly divided and politically polarized in a field that should not be that way at all. And all that after funding research to the lab that almost certainly uh, loosed this crap on the world in the first place. So that's where we're standing in 2022. Clearly, it's time to throw the old lab coat back on and get back to experimenting, right? What could possibly go wrong this time? The answer is a whole effing lot. The story about this is what scientists want to engineer a way to make vaccines contagious among animals. That's where it starts. And that's the way it gets spread out to them in the wild. And then hopefully the diseases they're carrying don't make their way into the human population as easily. On paper, that sounds great until you consider the risks, that is. Risks like this could offset the balance of death from natural disease in animal populations, leading to overbreeding and the introduction of other diseases. Or how about the possibility that vaccine batches in the wild will quickly evolve back to their original diseased form? Keep up with me now. By the way, lest you should be under the tragic misapprehension that the buck stops with the animals, please understand, this is a foothold into the notion of making vaccines contagious for people like me and you. That's right. If you were one of the millions of people who chose not to get the blah blah vaccine over the past couple of years, you had to know that it was only a matter of time before the people you so deeply offended found a way to get you to get the jab, whether you want it or not. Folks, this whole thing is disturbing on two levels. And Listen, number one. It's never a good idea to play God, ever. That doesn't mean that we don't seek medical advances so long as we're willing to follow the rules and work toward them incrementally, not rush to pump out the latest cool idea. And two, the ulterior motive behind this push is so blatantly obvious, it's almost insulting to the intelligence. You really want me to believe that the first time I'm hearing about contagious vaccines just happens to be right after a bunch of people didn't want to take your vaccine. Even if the motive is wrong, but the outcome is right, which seems like a sketchy possibility at best, having a dangerous motive can lead to doing things too quickly, cutting corners and stuff like that. And the next thing you know, shit leaks out of your lab, spreads into the air, and then zombie dinosaurs are roaming the land or something like that. Look, all I'm saying is it'd be nice if we just got a little bit of a breather before you scientists out there start screwing everything up again. We're screwed, Morgan. I hadn't heard that one, (laughs) Um, so I'm a little startled. Yep. That's concerning. Contagious vaccines. They want to spread it. That's the whole thing. (sighs) They want want you chipped. They want you scannable. Listen, when the CEO of Bayer comes out and says, you know, thanks to the vaccines, we now can do genetic collections and mapping. He said, you know, before the vaccines and before COVID – 90% of the world would have said, no, absolutely, you can't map my DNA. But thanks to the vaccines, now we're getting all from everybody. That's what the combination between these corporations and the science community and the government is so disturbing because I a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do politics. I'm, I'm a conservative. I want to be left alone. And so I always say in my speeches, you have to do politics in a way that preserves your ability to be left alone. You yeah. can't just expect that because there's people out there that want to do politics in a way that totally ruins your way of life and destroys it. So. How can we say that, though, when now it's not people that we elect? It's not like we could just do politics in a way that prevents this because there are these people out there that are unelected in these positions of power with this money and this influence that are going to do things that we did not consent to. And there's no avoiding stuff like this. There's no getting out of it if it's something that could spread like that. It's disturbing. Yeah. So something you alluded to earlier, and what I try to remind my audience, for the last 25 years, I've said that there's three things that we have to control in order to keep freedom. One is the education system, another is the court system, and the third is the media. We've basically lost them all. We've yeah. basically lost them all. Um, the court system, maybe by a very fine thread, we're hanging on to that, but the rest of it is pretty much lost. Mm-hmm. Now we have judicial tyranny. Now we have educational tyranny. We have uh, big media and big tech 
tyranny. We have medical tyranny. We have corporate tyranny with the mandates and things like that. If you want to keep your job, you got to do this or that. Uh, and bureaucratic, big government, you know. And it doesn't matter if there's an R by their name or a D by their name. If it's big government, it's the enemy. That's the bottom line. So all of this stuff is about control. They want to use all of these. They want to put the the summary of all human history you know this from what you're doing you're you're fighting against socialism you're interviewing people who have escaped communism all of these life stories the sum total of human history is man's inhumanity to man how man can dominate over other men and you think that suddenly we've just woken up and become all civil and great and you know the great society kind of thing no we're as evil as ever in this situation um and the tyranny, that's why I am so appreciative of your voice. And I don't want this, I want to say this, I don't want it to sound condescending because I don't mean it that way at all, but a young voice, right? It's so, because so many people out there are under the misconception that there are no young voices out there, right? So thank you for doing what you're doing. And um, what all, how, how all can people get involved with what you're doing? How can they follow you? Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Sure. Uh, so, our website is fightsocialism.org, and from there you can follow us on all socials. But my Instagram is morgan.zeggers, and that's really where I show everything. Uh, personally, I have a, a Freedom Flags business, so I make wooden flags. Yeah. So I show the behind the scenes of the workshop. I show my more rural lifestyle, and then I also show the behind the scenes of the filming where we, we get to talk with the survivors in a more intimate way. So actually looking at that and having a, a friend peer-to-peer -peer style communication of all of these issues of this way of life being a conservative woman is really important to me and that mess uh, the michigan state university study that i told you about it proves it's the most effective way to communicate values like freedom so yeah. so that's what we're trying to do on social media and you can follow us on all the platforms yeah and make sure you follow her and, and buy some flags too <laughs> the flags are awesome thank you yeah, i appreciate that, it i love the little peek into the wood shop and all of that kind of stuff and you have fun quirky content i enjoy it thank you quirky in a good way it's entertaining <laughs> so and for God's sake, bring her some cookies, all right? If you know she's in your neighborhood. <laughs> We're not done yet. We got one more sec segment. We're going to get off the rails for a little bit. We're going to see see what uh, Megan thinks about some of, the, uh, some of the woke stuff from TikTok that we'll get into. But uh, don't move. We'll be right back. Hang on. Woke TikTok. If you guys realize it or not but i am back in facebook jail three days uh of suspension for saying a couple of weeks ago that the uh the only difference between a cow chewing cud and kamala harris is the intelligent look on the cow's face i'm willing to take that three-day ban morgan i you know look whatever apparently you can't make fun of somebody's appearance um fair well, enough i wasn't making fun of her appearance i'm just saying she's unintelligent <laughs> she's she is she's not an intelligent human being i want morgan zegers to be the vice president Thank you. Like right I would now. never, I would never, but yeah. I appreciate that. Would you ever run for office? Absolutely not. I used to say that. Absolutely I used to, not. I used to say, hands down, no question about it, I'd never run for office, and I did I'm it. I'm going to be a homeschool, homemaking mom. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Nothing wrong with that. Thank you. Yeah. There you go, fellas. <laughs> a girl with values, but she's smarter than you, so be careful. Well, that's the thing, I not to go on a rant, but... You know, I have people that say, well, the problem is women like you that push these conservative values aren't actually living out your values. You're going on TV and you're doing your media stuff and you're being a boss, babe. And I'm like, what well, do you want me to be dumb and then educate our children? Right. Because your parents, especially a mother, you're the primary first educator of your child. And if yeah. you're going to homeschool, you want the woman of the family to be as educated and experienced and traveled and yeah. uh energetic as possible because they are going to raise up that baby yeah. and so i i feel like in this phase i'm trying to learn as much as i can and experience as much as i can for when i do become my my child's teacher yeah and you're doing a good job of it and trust me there is nothing more attractive in a woman than what you just said so thanks yeah. the uh the uh scary words that i say on this show every day especially with you sitting here because i never know what i'm going to get i never see them ahead of time uh, but I got a feeling that it's not going to be attractive. Uh, and that is, Chris, show me a TikTok. I know that every person of color has been on the receiving end of this. So my video is actually more for white people, actually. This is a serious question, and I would like a serious answer in my comment section or a stitch. 
Are y'all aware that y'all often take up space with disregard for the people of color around you? If there's any confusion, I can give you guys an example. I'm from New York City. Sometimes a sidewalk is narrow to the point where there's only enough room for two, tra two modes of traffic, one going and one coming. But that has never stopped white people from walking side by side and holding hands and expecting you to either stand and wait for them to pass or walk in the street if you need to keep going. Are you guys aware that this is something that you do or is it something that happens by accident? Because people of color are taught to be aware of how much space they're taking up at all times. So watching you guys take up space without even thinking about it is mind blowing to a lot of us. Well, the reason y'all don't walk side by side holding hands is because your men never stick around. So, I mean, there, how about that? And every time I stop in a parking lot and wait for black people to cross in front of me, it, because I'm being nice to let you, you walk as slow as you possibly can. So how about that? Am I wrong? Am I, I said what I said. Am I wrong? It's true. Morgan, you don't have to comment on that at all. Well, well so you, can st you can stay completely out of this, but. I think that this is more of a human problem where people lack basic manners. And that so, true. you know, you, they don't move out of the way on the sidewalks. It's not a race thing. The left makes everything about race, which is what we just saw there. But there is an issue of people are just rude on airplanes, on sidewalks, right. all that stuff, opening doors. I would love if we had more chivalry and, and that I kind agree. of stuff. So. Like in the airport, I, I don't mind flying. I don't mind. I normally fly 200,000 miles a year. I don't mind being on the plane it's the airport that drives me crazy yeah. like people who want to wear the big backpacks on the back and on the front it's like you're walking three wide bro this ain't nascar <laughs> you, you i mean you were completely so i get it on that people are just rude yeah right it's this not ain't about, about race, your though. skin color trust me sister that ain't a melanin issue okay <laughs> this is not i mean oh listen i take up more space because i weigh 225 pounds i don't want to I'm <laughs> I'm gravity challenge I'm challenging gravity. I don't know what I am. <laughs> gravity is challenging me, all right? Yeah. But the, here's the thing. This kind of thing where everything makes you what was the phrase I used last week week Chris an an uh, unearned moral authority. Everything like you you who are you? to speak into this sociological issue of how people walk on a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. like, and, and then you're gonna make it a race issue. Everything is racist. We talked about this all, but during the break. Everything yeah. is racist. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that racism that we're seeing. But what I also see too is social media gives these woke people who, let's yeah. be honest, are not the smartest and probably can't talk about many issues. It gives them this sense of seniority and yeah. professionalism almost where they explain the issue that right. they've just created in their mind to all of us as if they are helping everybody understand it. So it gives them a sense of purpose yeah. almost. And I think that's really like where a lot of this is coming from. They need a sense of fulfillment. And that's why everybody's got to get my book, Am I Crazy? I talk about how social really? media gives people a sense of authority mm. and an idea of celebrity. And it makes them... Yeah. become so-called online experts about yeah. everything. I think the audio version of this is coming out soon. I think they're finalizing that. But, oh, I uh, love that. I'll listen yeah. to it. That's it's the good. thing. On TikTok especially, they come up with new words, and then they explain those new words that they just created. And I think that gives them so so much yeah. validation with their, their troubles that they're having <laughs> on the inside. That's yep. how I see it. I need least. a glossary to keep up with most of it, quite honestly. Well, did you hear? I, I spoke at a campus recently, two weeks ago. I was there to talk about history because I focus on history and I get there and there's all these posters about human rights and they were like oh yeah that's for you there's some protesters out there 40 people were there protesting because they said a transphobic misogynist Morgan Zeggers was coming look at you I had to I was like misogynist isn't that you hate women so I google it and I'm like yep they're really calling me that and then transphobe because I defended women's sports and talked about that girl that was raped in the bathroom in ninth grade by a, a guy in a skirt keep up the fight one more second we'll be right back All right, everybody, I want you to go and follow Morgan Zegers. If you're not already, you probably are, but I want to make sure that you're following her on Instagram. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank Appreciate you for having me. Appreciate it very me. much. Go to blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code MORECHAD to get our overtime. It will save you $15 on an annual subscription. Please go sign up. We're working hard on those overtime segments, and uh, I think they're pretty good. So uh, go to uh, chadonblaze.com. Do a little shopping if you want. Of course, you can find me at watchchad.com. New shows live all over the country are being announced every single day we'll see you tomorrow we'll get off the rails love you god bless you talk to you then bye Thanks.
Ciao.